Good evening, everybody. This is Steve Fletcher with The Trumpet for My People. Today is August 11th, 2021. And I want to share another piece of information with you guys. I really was hoping it would not come to this. But uh, let us consider this detail as we go past August 11th. We are watching a time frame from the birthday of Barack Obama and this revelation that happened with lightning shown on the photo that was leaked from his birthday party. Now, we have a seven day time frame from August 4th, which is his birthday, to August 11th. But we have a seven day from his birthday party would take us to August 14th. But let us look at the conjunction of August 13th and August 14th between Friday night and Saturday, August 13th and 14th. So what we are looking at then is one or two more days and from the birthday party of the Antichrist, a six day difference to Friday the 13th. Now Friday the 13th has a lot of history directly related to persecution of Christians, persecution of those who were helping the Christians on Friday the 13th. Before I share with you that piece of information, I want to show you that 813, August 13th, 813, means in the Strong's Concordance, out of order or out of place. Out of order, out of place, disorderly, or slack in performance of duty. Order, out of order, out of place. Okay? And this brings to mind the motto of the Illuminati, order out of chaos. Out of order, out of place, order out of chaos. Okay. Connected to a six or seven day warning from the actual birthday party in Revelation of this photograph that was leaked looking at August 12th, 13th, or 14th as this time frame. Now, I want to share this article with you guys. Why Friday the 13th spelled doom for the Knights Templar. The much feared day was the beginning of the end for the powerful warriors. Why are Fridays that fall on a month's 13th day so fearful? Some attribute the origins to the Code of Hammurabi, one of the world's oldest legal documents, which may or may not have superstitiously omitted a 13th rule from its list. Others claim that the ancient Sumerians who believed the number 12 to be a perfect number, considered the one that followed it decidedly non-perfect. One of the most popular theories, however, links Friday the 13th with the fall of a fearsome group of legendary warriors, the Knights Templar. Founded around 1118 as a monastic military order devoted to the protection of pilgrims, 
traveling to the Holy Land following the Christian capture of Jerusalem during the First Crusade, the Knights Templar quickly became one of the richest and most influential groups of the Middle Ages, thanks to lavish donations from the crowned heads of Europe eager to curry favor with the fierce knights. By the turn of the 14th century, the Templars had established a system of castles, churches, and banks throughout Western Europe. And it was this astonishing wealth that would lead to their downfall. For the Templars, that end began in the early morning hours of Friday, October 13th, 1307. A month earlier, secret documents had been sent by couriers throughout France. The papers included lurid details and whispers of black magic and scandalous sexual rituals. They were sent by King Philip IV of France, an avaricious monarch who in the preceding years had launched attacks on the Lombards, a powerful banking group, and France's Jews, who he had expelled so he could confiscate their property for his depleted coffers. In the days and weeks that followed that fateful Friday, more than 600 Templars were arrested, including Grand Master Jacques de Molay and the Order's treasurer. But while some of the highest ranking members were caught up in Philip's net, so too were hundreds of non-warriors, middle-aged men who managed the day-to-day -day banking and farming activities that kept the organization humming. The men were charged with a wide array of offenses, including heresy, devil worship, and spitting on the cross, homosexuality, fraud, and financial corruption. The Templars were kept in isolation and fed meager rations that often amounted to just bread and water. Nearly all were brutally tortured. One common practice used by medieval inquisitors was the strapdu, in which the hands of the accused are tied behind their backs and then suspended in the air by a rope around their, wrist, their wrists, intended to dislocate the shoulders. As Dan Jones noted in his book, The Templars, the rise and spectacular fall of the Knights Templar, one of the accused hands were tied so tightly that blood pooled in his fingertips and he was kept in a pit no wider than a single footstep. Many of the men were likely stretched on the infamous rack or had their feet dipped in oil and held over a fire to burn. Given the extreme conditions, it's not surprising that within weeks, hundreds of Templars confessed to false charges, including Jacques de Molay. Pope Clement V was horrified, despite the fact that he'd been elected almost solely because of Philip's influence, he feared crossing the extreme, extremely popular Templars. The Knights' coerced confessions, however, forced his hands. Philip, who had anticipated Clement's reaction, made sure the allegations again against the Templars included detailed descriptions of their supposed heresy, counting on the gossipy, salacious accounts to carry much weight with the church. Clement also issued a papal bull ordering the Western kings to arrest Templars living in their lands. Few followed the papal request, but the fate of the French Templars had already been sealed. Their lands and money were confiscated and officially dispersed to another religious order, the Hospitallers, although greedy Philip did get his hands on some of the cash he'd coveted. Within weeks of their confessions, many of the Templars recanted and Clement shut down the Inquisition trials in early 1308. The Templars lingered in their cells for two years before Philip had more than 50 of the men, 50 of them burned at the stake in 1310. Two years later, Clement formally dissolved the order, though he did so without saying they'd been guilty as charged. In the wake of that dissolution, some Templars again confessed to gain their freedom while others died in captivity. In the spring of 1314, Grand Master Molay and several other Templars were burned at the stake in Paris, bringing an end to their remarkable era and launching an ever longer, even longer lasting theory about the evil possibilities of Friday the 13th. Okay. 
So the connection to Friday the 13th as an all-around, anyway, evil day connected to the history of the Knights Templar, connected to the birthday party of the Antichrist by six days, there might be something going down on Friday the 13th as a kickoff for the Antichrist. So this is what I wanted to share with you as we are now late in the day of August 11th. It's August 12th in Israel. And we continue to be watchful day to day. And we do know that we are any moment, any day now, all the signs show that we are on the brink of the rapture of the church. So we want to stay ready and we want to stay vigilant with all the signs each and every day. So we, I want to thank you for um, uh, listening and um, being with me for this uh, report. And I pray you guys are blessed. This is Steve Fletcher with the trumpet for my people. The sign of his coming revealed.